In a world where dreams meet reality, there exists a place where your business can flourish. That place is Shopify. Imagine having the power to craft your online store with tools that make it as easy as a gentle breeze. Whether you're an artisan of handmade wonders, a creator of digital treasures, or a curator of the latest trends, Shopify stands by your side. With its customizable templates, seamless integrations, and support that's always there, your dream store is just a heartbeat away. Join millions of visionaries around the globe and let Shopify guide you on your journey. Visit roguemedianetwork.com slash Shopify. That's roguemedianetwork.com slash S-H-O-P-I-F-Y. And embark on your free trial. Shopify, where your commerce dreams come to life. Rachel Ruth Tate, and this is Text Astrology. Hello and happy right now to everybody out there. It is always a good day to be. This is Rachel Ruth, your very own Central Texas Astrologer, coming to you from the Rogue Media Network Studios in downtown Waco. Another full moon is upon us, and so is another episode of Text Astrology. Before we dig into this full moon, I have a single announcement. Text Astrology is now more than a podcast. I am also now including astrology readings in my practice. That means head on over to www.textastrology.com and book your very own natal chart reading or a reading for one you love. Use the code I love you, no spaces, for 50% off your first appointment at checkout. It will expand your horizons and your own personal understanding of what the stars have to say about the lived experience of your life. So treat yourself, give context to your experience. Each reading includes your chart and a recording for your continued listening and learning at home. Now back to the matter at hand. In this episode, we are parsing out the full moon in Virgo happening on Tuesday, March 7th at 6.41 a.m. Central Standard Time at 16 degrees of Virgo. I'm recording very, very close to this time, closer than we have been in a while. So Virgo is the sixth sign in the zodiac, our mutable earth sign represented by the Virgin and ruled by Mercury. Mercury also exalts or finds its pinnacle of ability in Virgo as well. Think the mental yin, the ability to assimilate the entirety of incoming information your senses are perceiving into meaningful bundles of information. Virgo is the embodiment of discernment. And this Virgo moon has a serious matter on her mind, pun intended, That matter being the impending sign change of Saturn, our greater malefic or the social burden we shoulder. Saturn changes signs mere moments, like 20 minutes, after the moon is full for the first time in three years. It changes signs, entering Pisces and opposing this Virgo full moon as it does. The moon is seeing a sober reflection in the mirror, we could definitely say. And each lunation, each new and full moon is characterized by several things. First, the sign it occurs in and the moon's comfort there. We have Virgo. Moon has triplicity rulership. It's good. Second, the condition of that sign's ruler, so the condition of Mercury in this case. Third, the closest aspect or relationship the moon makes to any planet at the time of lunation. That's Uranus in this case. And last but not least, what major planetary movements are taking place at the time the moon is full or new? And of course, there are many fine details we could go into this Virgo full moon and will, But I want to focus on the last of the aforementioned first. The major planetary movement being that ingress of Saturn into Pisces, which I just mentioned. 
The new moon before this Virgo full moon was also in Pisces, forerunning this major, major planetary shift, planting the seeds of that awareness that are going to begin to come to corporeal fruition, this mutable earth Virgo fruition, and into powerfully sensed perception, that being Saturn and Pisces. Think of the full moon, the moon reflecting the fullness of the light of the sun in Pisces, mind you. Think of the full moon as that perfect mirror, like I mentioned, for us to see the reflection of the face of Saturn as it enters. So it's been about 30 years, 20-something years, since we last saw Saturn in Pisces, right? And it's a good reminder. This Virgo moon is a good reminder. I'm going to step back and refine our understanding of a few key items here too. Virgo, where this moon occurs, is Mercury's sign, yes? It opposes Pisces, where the slow-moving Saturn is sliding in the door, Pisces being Jupiter's sign. So Mercury and Jupiter's other signs, Gemini and Sagittarius, they also oppose each other, forming a polar axis. Pisces and Virgo, the fish and the virgin, are a duad as well. Mercury and Jupiter signs oppose. Because Mercury is the personal mind, the lower mind, the talk, the thought, the writing, the trading, the created creating. And Jupiter is the polar, the universal mind, the higher mind, the transcendence, the truth, the soul, the evolution, The creative principle manifest. Both are present and present inside of us. The small and the large, the personal and the universal, the one being and the many beings, our perception of reality and the reality itself, the micro and the macro. This should all be making a lot more sense to you than it usually might. Because Mercury is in Pisces right now, uniting these concepts and making our minds a little softer, making it easier to vibe on these kind of mentally and spiritually expansive ideas. So, woohoo. I'm speaking to you about the nature of the Mercury and Jupiter axis because of the energetic emphasis that is currently shifting into this Virgo Pisces axis right now. That is what is up in the sky. Saturn's changing signs. Oh my gosh, big news. The opposing themes of material, Virgo, and spiritual, Pisces, discernment. We are being given a Virgo lens. This full moon is a magnifying glass, a mirror, in which to begin to examine and assimilate personally the larger spiritual lessons, Saturn through Pisces, that are in store for us as a whole and each individually over the coming few years. And depending on where this Virgo Pisces axis falls in your chart and where your planets and luminaries reside, so depending on you, these themes I speak to may emerge extremely quickly after this full moon. Outer planet sign changes can be starkly felt, or it could unfold more slowly over the coming weeks and months. Many of you Xennials, Xennials with a Z, those cuties at the end of the millennial generation and at the very head of Gen Z, y'all will be beginning your own Saturn returns as well. So this is inaugurating three years of the realization of maturation. Most of us get two or three Saturn returns, one right before or around age 30, one right before and around age 60, one right before and around age 90. They correspond to a completion of life phases. So Xennials, y'all's youth is over. Congrats, you're just as lame as the rest of us. And there's a feeling to that. Nigh a responsibility that becomes apparent. You all will be asked to do more adult things and lead socially in ways that weren't appropriate before. Aging is powerful and bittersweet. Saturn is both the distinction and the weight of being in charge. These themes of responsibility are going to follow in the direction of this lunation's ruler. One of the key items I mentioned in determining the quality and nature of a moon. I also said Mercury is in Pisces, and indeed it is. And it rules this full moon from its place in opposition at seven degrees of Pisces. 
Remember, though Mercury in Pisces can be good for mental expansion, spiritual attainment, and artistic expression, Mercury, our minds, our speech, our thoughts, that is in detriment and, and fall here. So double difficult. It does not have much power in this sign. So this full moon may also reflect that feeling of confusion and disempowerment. Like the mind can't yet get its head around how to materially address these emergent emotional and spiritual crises. And that may be a crisis of faith for many. A, why is this happening to me, type thing. There's a good bit of that martyrdom feeling in this and some of that hazy victimhood sentiment that we could mentally escape to if we allowed ourselves to be self-indulgent babies. But with Saturn joining the fray and the Pisces party that Mercury and the Sun are currently having, don't think you'll get off that easy and don't wish to. Saturn in Pisces is here to grow you emotionally, to mature your relationship with what created you, to solidify a personal philosophical foundation and creed that allows you to build meaning into your life and evolve into your actual purpose. Saturn is that which gets better with age, that which holds against the test of time. The crosses each must bear in becoming, and those which are worth bearing. This heavy Saturnian spiritual flavor aside, the closest aspect this full moon makes is to another planet like I mentioned to Uranus, the outer planet of shock and social change, innovation, and upset, which is sitting at 15 degrees of Taurus, making an almost perfect trine to the moon at 16 Virgo. That means that this full moon confusion or issue may be stemming from what comes as great change. This change, however, Uranus is change, and this direct relationship means change. But it comes to the moon in the form of a trine, a 120-degree angle of the nature of Jupiter itself, meaning this Uranian breakdown and breakthrough stuff, is here to deliver us into a better future into our higher purpose so what feels like the end may just be the beginning the next two weeks could contain many endings and beginnings much serious serious shift and deep meaningful experience that changes life courses and alters spiritual or emotional trajectories the weight that comes with it will be worth the burden born again as we shall be reborn into a sky where Saturn is not the strongest, most powerful planet around anymore. I repeat, is not. And it's good to get out from under the thumb of authority, right? To break free from the Aquarian Saturnian social agreements that we've made that are no longer serving us. I believe this full moon in Virgo is here to mentally highlight that we don't have to be chained to former versions of ourselves. We are allowed and absolutely required to continue to mature and expand. And we get to leave old things behind. So don't get too tethered to old agreements. You can renegotiate your relational contracts. You can outgrow your roles and move on. You're allowed and encouraged to improve past whatever you imagined was your previous zenith. Beliefs can and should change as new realizations arise. The world needs whatever you're here to give to it. Evolution is a part of life, an essential part of life, says Darwin. And this full moon underscores the fact that your presence is on purpose. And so I will use this sense of purpose to inform our hopeful horoscopes. Virgo likes a good bit of reassurance and digestible information, so we are going to stick with our I Am style affirmation horoscopes this episode But with a mutable twist, I can be. So I request rising signs be used for these horoscopes as the ascendant speaks to the first house of yourself, the physical you, but your sun or moon sign works in a pinch. So this full moon in Virgo cycle for all 12 signs. Aries. I can be compassion incarnate. Taurus, I can be a reservoir of hope. Gemini, 
I can be a visionary leader. Cancer. I can be my wildest dreams. Leo. I can be the energy of respect. Virgo. I can be a true partner. Libra. I can be a paragon of practice. Scorpio. I can be joy in action. Sagittarius. I can be a refuge. Capricorn. I can be love expressed. Aquarius. I can be a powerful patron. Pisces. I can be deeply committed. Let those horoscopes bubble in the cauldron of your mind as we take a short break for a few words from our sponsors. And here we are back with more text astrology, y'all. This part of the program is dedicated to our top three planetary transits to pay attention to over the next two weeks of this lunar cycle. So let's begin with the first, which I have already introduced quite a bit. Number one, Saturn enters Pisces on Tuesday, March 7th at 7.03 a.m. Central Standard Time, mere minutes after the moon is full, ushering in three years of Saturn through Pisces, the twelfth and final sign of the zodiac, our mutable water sign ruled by Jupiter. So folks, it is Saturn and Pisces instructing us from now through 2026. Saturn is the last visible planet or the last planet we can see with our naked eyes in the night sky. It takes the longest to go around the sun of those planets, which we can see, which makes sense. It's the furthest away and its cycle thus takes the longest to complete. Planets that we can see with our eyes also tend to be visible in our lives on the individual level without the need to zoom out to the generational level. So Saturn cycles, the lessons we learn by being a part of society, which have the distinction of being the slowest, which makes sense for the Saturnian archetype, that which is old, that which is tradition, that which is social obligation, that which is principled, that which is law and order, so you get it. Our slow-moving Saturn cycles occupy the longest period of any that we can personally track with ease or any overt awareness of the progress, which makes Saturn cycles some of our most significant. Saturn is the architect and builder of the foundations that hold up our life. It is that which plans and matures and challenges in order that we may age with more grace. Wisdom doesn't come free, however, and Saturn's lessons typically feel heavy and burdensome. We don't like to be obliged or required or restricted, and that's what Saturn does to us. Work, rules, practice, the results are incredible, but often not our favorite to feel, especially not initially. And feeling is the name of the game for this Saturn transit through Pisces. Pisces is a mutable water sign represented by the fish, yes? It's the school that moves together. It's the intuitive felt and sense, the potential of direct knowledge and divine connection and the conscious awareness. Received understanding, inner belief, truth with a capital T, that which is beyond mere earthly facts, Pisces. And the truth is, some things are heavy to feel. Grief is true. Life is made up of equal and opposites. Up needs down. Pleasure needs pain. Wake means sleep. Saturn makes us aware of that. And much of the emotional and spiritual burdens we bear, water signs are all about the emotional and intuited. Those pains are produced by our relationships with others. And they're precisely what produces the virtues in relationship of compassion and kindness. This is the premise of the Tibetan Buddhist practice of Tonglen meditation. Look it up if you want to challenge your inner fiber. It's beautiful. It's the literal practice of compassion, which can be excruciating, really. Look it up. 
and Saturn will be highlighting all the invisible wounds we have. The emotional costs we've paid over the last six years that Saturn has held its court over the sky and had the final say with regard to social rules, personal restrictions, the centralization of authority, the empowerment of the executive, and the force of the traditional establishment, these have all constituted the dominant forces in life and culture. The rich getting richer, my friends, the powerful getting more so. And as my dear friend and astrologer therapist Leah Oldham says, we are all, and we have been, suffering from this late-stage capitalism. So Saturn changing signs is changing that and changing the nature of our long-term challenges. Really, we're all hurt right now. Whether we choose to acknowledge it or not, we've had a large collective trauma. A lot of people have died. And we are hurt in many ways that aren't physical, though many of us aren't physically well either. Long COVID, inactivity. And the only reason one begins to heal is because one is indeed wounded. Saturn in Pisces is about the responsibility to heal your body, your heart, your soul, no matter the source of the pain. To reconcile your beliefs about the universe with what you experience as its reality. Because no matter whose fault it is, your healing is your responsibility. There is no sense in blaming others or seeking salvation outside. If you haven't fixed that which feels broken inside of yourself, nobody owes it to you. And even if they do, seeking other problems to solve or pills to take is merely distraction and laziness as well. And Mars in Gemini has emphasized just how distracted and frustrated and mentally lazy we are. Our attention is utterly fragmented. We're so concerned with celebrity and our For You pages just won't quit interrupting. What did we used to do with all that time before social media? Before cell phones? Before the internet? Before TV? A lot has been lost in the technological era. So get ready to power down and go in. Saturn in Pisces asks us to begin to pray again in earnest. Like you mean it, like it matters. Like God or whatever you call the universal creative force actually exists. The predominant social paradigm is materialism, guys. Our country is one nation under the capitalist church, y'all. Don't get it twisted. And I'm not talking about praying or talking to God just when you're feeling like it and just when you're sad and you need him. Not every third day or occasionally sometimes. Not when you get around to it or finish the altar you've been concepting or make the prayer, blah, blah, blah. No. No. Make it a point to be consistent. Even with the things you can't see the products of physically, you don't need anything to get quiet. Because that's what practice is. The honor of ritual and the wisdom of repetition. Saturn. Every action says this matters, and you walk your belief with your feet and you make it with the work of your hands over time. Saturn. This is even and especially true with the non-physical. Just try establishing a meditation practice, which is actually a perfect thing to do with the three years of Saturn through Pisces. So commit to some form of personal therapy, whether it be healing, art, prayer, devotion, service, expression, you name it. It will pay so many spiritual and emotional dividends in the years to come. Speaking of dividends, second transit, Venus enters Taurus on Thursday, March 16th at 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, the Second sign in the zodiac, Venus's very own fixed Earth domicile, which she transits for three weeks, ruling that sweet roost, remaining in Taurus until April 10th. Venus, remember, is personal benefic. It's our planet of beauty, love, joy, pleasure, and affection, as well as ascetic, what feels good to us personally. And Taurus is one of two signs that Venus rules, the other being Cardinal Air Libra. Taurus, though, represents our physical pleasures, fixed Earth, and Libra, the non-physical. Venus and Taurus likes her some fine things, y'all. She likes to enjoy with the tangible senses, 
what feels, smells, and tastes good. That is Venus and Taurus stuff. Libra can have sight and sound and mental and whatever. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is also the first time in some time, make it three years, that we get to experience Venus in her home sign of Taurus without a hard old 90 degree square hard angle from Saturn in Aquarius. Woo woo. We get some Venus, Venus pleasure, not under pressure. And dang, does that feel good. That's good because Venus in Taurus likes to relax and spread out and take her sweet time. She will not be rushed. After all, Taurus is represented by the bull. And who rushes a bull? She grazes the world at her leisure and pleasure. And this, you guys, is the best transit going at the moment. Good, juicy, soft, sensual Venus in Taurus is a cherry of a transit. Sure, Uranus is still sharing this sign, but what of it? There's a lot of beautiful, delicious stuff one can surprise oneself with after all. And that's what I would recommend doing with such a transit as these lovely Venus in Taurus weeks. Simply enjoy yourself. Live beautifully. And I mean that. Simply. Don't complicate it. This isn't rocket science. Taurus, and I speak as one, is uncomplicated. She likes what is just good. The moon exalts here. Taurus likes the nourishing and sustaining and that which we can do and will love forever. The original, the classic. Sun on the face, wind on the skin, silk sheets, wool socks, fine chocolate, good cheese, pure water, fresh flowers, essential oils, big hugs, close cuddles, home-cooked meals, precious metals, shiny gems, feet in sand, deep tissue massage, bubble baths, Grand Cru champagne, down comforters, long naps, love making, croissants, espresso, ripe berries, you get it. Venus and Taurus is that literal goodness and the constancy of unconditional love and physical enjoyment. She doesn't need the elaborate or ornate. Taurian ascetic is elemental and warm. It is all that feels plain, nice, and organically good and that which is eternally lovable and physically beneficent. Venus in Taurus is the smell of that fresh black earth from which all things grow. She is the feeling of good health and living vitality. She is the constancy of family and true partnership, that whose love and joy will never abandon you. Like the beauty of a sunrise or sunset, inviolable are the Taurian gems of existence but we can take them to excess. So be careful with Venus and Taurus for straight up hedonism. Overconsumption of goods, decadence bordering on gluttony, overspending or splurging more than you may, and physical lethargy or laziness. Venus and Taurus's most enlightened expressions are often her simplest and most moderate ones, though there is a place for sensual extremes, I guess especially with our good old shake-up buddy Uranus close by. Maybe there is some more novel tactile experience that you seek, maybe a bit more extreme, like the sensation of skydiving or the thrill of driving a beautiful foreign coast or the excitement of opening a bottle of wine as old as you are. Maybe it's adopting a new pet. Maybe it's purchasing your dream house or some coveted accessories. There are many fabulous ways to play this combination. But remember, Taurus likes that which is steady, that which is constant. So look to the parts of your mind, heart, and being that have loved forever. What did you love as a small child before you needed a reason? That's the Taurus stuff. The flavors you savored from early on, the weather or environs outside, whatever kind. And that brought light to your eyes and joy to your heart? Chances are that's Taurus. The way you dressed before you cared about people's opinions. The places you've always felt at home or at one. Taurus. So don't reinvent the wheel. Just maybe rediscover it. This sweetly wonderful Venus 
and Taurus transit. Speaking of discovery, third transit. The sun enters Aries on Monday, March 20th at 4.20 p.m. Central Standard Time, ushering in the vernal equinox and we once again rediscover spring. Now, this is an especially auspicious period of the year, may I say, because the sun represents the vital force that powers and brings life to all things, and that sun also exalts and does its best work in Aries, the cardinal fire sign, doing its finest vivification as the days grow in length. This time of year, the sun is milder than it is in its own home sign of Leo in the Northern Hemisphere, and it has a distinct direction forward. Aries is the first sign in the zodiac, and it's ruled by Mars. It wants to get up and go, to be first, to exclaim with its, with its motion a physical, I am, and the sun entering Aries represents the solar new year every year, the zodiacal new year. The sun goes from the final sign to the first, and the cold wet of winter gives way to the warmer dew of spring. The sun is also one of the triplicity rulers of fire signs, of course. The star at the center of our solar system has to have an affinity for all that is plasma, so we will have the energy to begin all of these new beginnings, the energy to implement the changes Saturn is begging us to make in Pisces. Especially because the sun, our spirit, a it has a big time friend here. Our other fire sign, triplicity ruler, greater benefic mentor teacher, Jupiter, is in the Aries house as well, increasing and expanding the resources the sun has to work with here. There is a lot of energy for positive actions. Jupiter and the sun, both in good condition, will also have us literally feeling better that we may find our activity even dramatically heightened at this time. We are going to want to get busy and get moving. So slow down and use the movement for a good cause. Self-actualize. Be intentional. The sun and Jupiter in Aries want to self-actualize, to rise and open, to bloom like spring flowers. And Venus in Taurus is the perfect companion with whom to enjoy the zesty vim and lively high spirits. There is nothing that won't be made a little bit better by the positive, powerful, and useful sun in Aries, however. So enjoy this transit too. Beware to keep the situations realistic, however. Jupiter there in Aries can be so bold it borders on belligerently optimistic. Move and engage at the speed of life and Get ready to put your whole self, your whole sun energy of self in that which life is serving you up. The occasions you'll rise to will inevitably present themselves and you'll be ready for them. You don't need to go bang down doors to find some action and opportunity these days, especially given that this sun enters Aries and this spring equinox takes place just a day before there is a new moon in the same sign in Aries that we will speak to next episode. Whatever is actively beginning in your life, you are fixing to sow those seeds of action that you will reap later this year. Jupiter is going to fly through the sign of Aries, exiting into Taurus in May, not long after the sun finishes its own annual transit through Aries. Translation. Jupiter is going to be blowing and going and adding expanse to all things our sun and Aries energy touches. Chances are it will be something we do with fixing this Mars and Gemini BS we've been dealing with for literally fucking ever. That really annoying thing. Next episode, I get to celebrate it leaving, finally. But Jupiter and the Sun are the punctuation on this Mars retrograde. How do we find new joy and new purpose in a strange and slightly annoying world? That, my friends, is all of our healing journey should we choose to accept it. How will the healing be feeling? Well, let's address the upcoming quality of time. The two weeks following this full moon in Virgo lunation will feel revelatory, therapeutic, emotional, spiritual, and noteworthy. Which brings us into our do's and don'ts for this full moon in Virgo syzygy. Do, slow down and listen to yourself and others 
in order to truly discern and learn. Don't lose your outer sense of self-awareness and inhibit the progress of others while daydreaming and being in the way. Do enjoy what is enjoyable and know your heart lit up shines all around you. Don't discard responsibility in favor of pleasure, but rather see the beauty and duty. Do open up and try new and exciting things that set your soul on fire. Don't allow yourself to inhabit extremes as balance isn't often found at the very edge. Again, I am now offering natal chart or other chart readings to private clients. You can visit my website, www.texastrology.com to book yours or one for a friend. Having your chart done adds meaning to these podcasts, whether I do it or you visit another, another friendly astrologist. And that wraps up this episode of the show. Remember, we are all the healers, the healing and the healed during this full moon in Virgo syzygy. And please like, follow, subscribe to, rate, save, review, and share this podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you enjoy your podcast. Do it right now. Like it, follow it, follow through. The full moon in Virgo keeps her word after all. That's it for this episode, folks. Meet me here every full and new moon for more cosmic wisdom. For now, you can find me on Instagram at Rachel Ruth Tate and at Text Astrology or between the pages of my book, Meditations on Being, available on Amazon and wherever else you purchase books. In a world where dreams meet reality, there exists a place where your business can flourish. That place is Shopify. Imagine having the power to craft your online store with tools that make it as easy as a gentle breeze. Whether you're an artisan of handmade wonders, a creator of digital treasures, or a curator of the latest trends, Shopify stands by your side. With its customizable templates, seamless integrations, and support that's always there, your dream store is just a heartbeat away. Join millions of visionaries around the globe and let Shopify guide you on your journey. Visit roguemedianetwork.com slash Shopify. That's roguemedianetwork.com slash S-H-O-P-I-F-Y. And embark on your free trial. Shopify, where your commerce dreams come to life.